Hello, Amiga coders. This is Photon again. Uh, welcome back. We're going to continue the Blitter saga. And um, I want to go over a little bit more about the registers themselves before moving on to um, scrolling and stuff. Uh, so I've prepared a little bit here. Uh, you will have to get these from my files or type them in yourselves. And these are the names of the registers uh, that are relevant to uh, to using the blitter. So um, first of all we have a strange register up here and the base register for these is uh, the usual custom chip address which starts at DFF triple zeros. Uh, what that means is that these are offsets to that base address. And uh, I'm going to introduce a, um, a way to address these in a more readable way, uh, which also introduces uh, addressing modes a little bit more than, than for just um, copper po poking. Uh, I'll explain that in a bit. Um, I'd like to give you an overview, so let's go through these. Uh, Blitter destination data register contains one word, and that is the result of the last blitted word. So the Blitter has combined all its sources and performed its logical operations, shifted, masked, and so on, and the re result ends up here. And this register can be read only uh, to check things like if uh, blitter objects or bobs, uh, that is blitter generated sprites, uh, for those of you who play games, uh, if they intersect, uh, you can use this for collision detection uh, by, uh, <coughs> by um, anding their outlines uh, in a separate uh, sort of collision bit plane you can you can detect these collisions if they do intersect there will be bits left in this in this uh, in this uh, word so uh, it's also used for MFM decoding where you XOR all the words uh, of a sector and um, you get uh, a, uh, a checksum of sorts out and you can, can can compare this to the actual uh, checksum. Here's the read-only version of DMA control register and uh, this is only useful for one thing really namely to check if the blitter is, is, is working or not. This bit will be one as we discussed in the previous tutorial until the operation is done, at which point it becomes zero, and you can safely go on to <coughs> overwrite the values in the blitter registers to instruct it for another blit. Here then are the uh, the uh, conventional blitter registers for setting up a blit, and they're pretty much in the order that you need to load them. Uh, there will be uh, I will. Um, talk a little bit about um, how you should think when you load the registers, which order you should load them in and so on. So this uh, tells the blitter, it puts the blitter in a sort of mode. You, you can set it into area fill mode, line drawing mode, or the conventional um, combination of sources to form uh, some sort of output. Um, that's still sort of an area mode because we're working in our uh, memory uh, window or memory rectangle if you remember the previous tutorial but uh, it does not perform a fill operation it just uh, shifts and masks and combines uh, uh, the bitmaps that you point to so these two control words uh, 
is what I went through in the previous tutorial and I will expand on that. Here are the um, mask bits. The two mask words form uh, two sets of 16 bits masks that will crop the rectangle at the left and right edges so that you can not only blit uh, memory windows that are an even width of, uh, div divisible by 16. So it's a way of, of adjusting that. You can also use these registers for patterns at the edges but only at the, the left and right edges. They simply mask the first and the last word on each row in your blit. Here then are the pointers to to the sources and the destination. And finally the, the blitter size. I will not go through these as these are, well, very rarely used I should say. Uh, and they're only for, for um, special modes and, and extra large blitz. Uh, here are the modulo registers, which we also discussed in the previous tutorial. Discussed, I say, I, I told you about them. And you didn't have anything to say back to me. <laughs> but anyway. And finally, here are some interesting registers. Instead of pointing uh, the sources A, B, and C to a m memory address, where hopefully some graphical data is stored, you can put patterns and um, fill values and all kinds of things in each of these three words. So these words then will will be used as a uh, repeating a pattern that repeats for every word of the blit. So it's sort of a three constants that you can use in if you have a, uh, have a bright idea for some for some effect. Uh, you might want to uh, I don't know mask a bunch of stuff in the memory and you want the mask to be dynamic and then you want to sort of use this this pattern as 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 a global constant to mask every single word in the blit and things like that and finally the the write only version of uh, the dma control register which partially enables blitter dma and has another bit to give blitter priority over what over the cpu of course when this uh, we have blitted so far without knowing this the state of this bit which is is fine to keep things simple but when you optimize your program you want to control whether well if if the cpu has a lot to do you want to set it to zero to um let the blitter give away every fourth of its intended blitter cycles to the CPU. Otherwise, it will hog every available cycle from the CPU until the blitter is uh, until the blit is done. So this is a way of naming these uh, cryptic addresses. I don't use it myself, so I will probably have a little bit of difficulty in in remembering the exact names, but I think I'll do fine. Um, so we were here in the init code and we had um, experimented by changing the uh, blitter control register value. This is um, the end result of of all the combinations uh, that are possible uh, between the three sources available to blitter. We're not using any one of them but still this controls the output then so if we set all the bits to one all the output bits will be one and if we set them all to zero all the output bits will be zero regardless of uh, how many source channels are enabled uh, and so on <coughs> uh, there are some bits in the in blitcon1 the second control word 
that control things like which mode you're in. You c you can enable area fill mode and you can enable line drawing modes, uh, several line drawing modes. And you can tell the blitter to work in descending mode by setting bit 1. And uh, what happens then is that the blitter reverses completely whatever address you pointed to to start with it will start from and then work backwards in memory towards address 0 um, and any module you, any modulo you write it will subtract instead of add so it will work backwards and skip a backwards that means that you can uh, when you start you must set you must point to the lower right corner actually the last word of the blit the lower right corner of your defined memory rectangle and you must keep uh, the positive value here blitter skip which was 12 or 14 or something so that it subtracts the modulo after it reaches the left edge on each row. So that's how that works. Um, what say we start by renaming these registers? Well, this introduces a uh, an addressing mode. We've already used it down here to specify offsets to an address. In this case we've loaded a base address into A1 and a few bytes higher up in memory from this address we we've poked our high word and low word like this and um, we're going to use the same addressing mode that will work the same way it will temporarily add a value to the uh, to the base address register uh, whether you prefer well which red address register should we use well a7 or the stack pointer is used um, a6 some like to keep exec base in address register in a6 uh, and put uh, the base address for the custom chip registers in a5 but i figure since we've turned off the system we no longer need exec base that means that that register free is free so we can use it instead of of permanently for the whole demo store a library base address that we'll never use so how do we do this well we load the effective address of the custom chip registers into a6 provided we type comma instead of an m um and how do we type this to put this value in DMA con? Remember there were two registers, a read-only reg register and a write-only register, and we'll use both of them here. We're going to write a value, that means we're going to use DMA con without the R for read. Um, and uh, we're going to add A6 within parentheses. I have a function key for that. Uh, so this is basically what it does. Let's go down and check again at what address this is. It was at the bottom. It's hex 96. So hex DFF 000 plus hex 96 indeed results in the same address that we replaced. So here we test the DMA con read only version and we can still use the offset notation and likewise uh, we can replace that and what this does is is it saves four cycles on a 68,000 CPU and it, it cleans things up a bit, perhaps, if you're used to this sort of thing. Uh, now, we're testing bit 6, because 14 minus 8 is 6. 
why do we do that? Well, because the bit test operation, I wanted to uh, expand on this uh, in the last tutorial, but I forgot. I'm sorry if I confused you. We're going to test bit 14, and bit test is a byte operation, while DMACON R is a word register. That means that bit 14 will be the sixth bit 6 of the first byte of this word. And we need to point the bit test operation to the direct address, uh, which is hex DFF002. So I don't know if that cleared things up or just confused you more, but uh, since we know this now, we can we can clean it up and what I, we can continue cleaning this up and we're loading this into blitcon zero and blitcon one but that's uh, not whoops no we're not we're deleting stuff um i'm going to put the the proper i had descending mode before i'm going to put the original uh, clear operation we had um originally there first and um, put it back in there and um, write that blitcon 0 a6 ding ding thank you um, because this address equals hex dff 040 uh, and we write a long word to it we set both blitcon 0 and blitcon 1 and so it is for the high and low words of the pointer address we can write this to the blit blit d p t h. I told you I was no good th good at these. Um, and it will write both the high and the low word of of this address. This then is BLTD mod, and uh, this is the BLT size. So there we go, we've cleaned it up a little bit. Um, the next step then, well, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the mask registers beca because they, they come into play now that we're going to convert this into a copy instruction, a copy blit. Uh, because eventually we want to be scrolling this rectangle and uh, a scrolling operation is a copy blit with a shift added to it. Um, suppose we um, demonstrate um, the mask registers. What's the be best way to do that? Well, um suppose we point both the destination and the a source to the same address and um we will say we we copy from the same address to the same address the only difference is we want to mask the edges because we don't want to well just for demonstration purposes. What to do then is to calculate. We need to. We certainly need to enable another source here. And um, uh, these source and destination bits look like this. Um, bit 1 here in this nibble is obviously the destination Obvious, obviously I say because I know it is <laughs> which is a poor explanation um, but bit th bits 3, 2, 1 and 0 in this nibble correspond to the sources A, B, C and the destination D. So to enable A and D 
we need to make a value that looks like this. And we can find the value of this bit combination by typing like this. Actually, I wanted to clear the screen here. And I didn't get my... Uh, to get uh, your previous command back that you typed previously, just press arrow up. If you just press enter, obviously, well, still kept it. Anyway, the value is 9. And that means that we can enable the A source and the D destination. Uh, in this, in this, uh, l let's call it a source mask, even if it does contain the destination. Channel mask is a more appropriate term for it. So this copies from the A pointer to the D pointer, and makes the, and is very de depressing because it doesn't matter what the A pointer, what the A source points to. Uh, even if it contained data, all the output bits would become zero with this min term or, or um, logical combination byte here, these two nibbles. Um, so that's not very useful. We're going to calculate the so-called min term. And there are various complicated formulas for, for doing this. I prefer this very simple method. And I'm going to do it down here after the entire source. And I will make this, I will put these constants at the top to make sure that they're set before the assembler encounters our init code. So let's put them there. And let's go down here and create a comment section. If you type end, that tells the assembler to stop assembling and ignore whatever is after this end instruction, this end compiler directive, I should say. So let's uh, type some notes freely here. I am a little cat and I'm a dirty dog. Woof, woof. That's the lyrics of a camp Swedish uh, pop song from the 80s. Anyway, actually I think it goes meow 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 meow, but any anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, let's see if it assembles. Hopefully it does if we haven't made a boo-boo. And you can see it, it completely ignores this these um, silly instructions, whereas it says legal operator if we so that's a parenthesis for now. Um, here's the way to calculate a um, uh, a what is essentially a uh, an eight bit uh, min term that we will supply in the letter control words. This is just so that you will have the tools to do any blit, as we'll discover. There are a few combinations that come up again and again, and I will explain a bit about those. Um, so let's see. Goodness me. So let's make a, a little table here. Well, you know what, let's leave those at zero for now. What I'm typing here is the um, I'm simply incrementing the um,
possible combinations here. These are these here are the numbers zero through seven counted upwards, and it just so happens that when you type ABC as the column headers here, that means that channel A has the value four, channel B has the value two, and channel C has the value one. You don't have to care about that really. These are just line numbers, and these are just um, the um, bit combinations the blitter uses to combine channels A, B, and C. So what you want to look for is these output bits. So what happens is let's say that we wanted the you type in the this column you change the bits to one that you want to be set one for every combination of the sources here that means that if we want to ignore channels B and C if they can be anything and the output should be a copy of channel A you simply copy the bits to the destination like that. Um, if you wanted to make an OR operation, if you also wanted to include um, the B channel, when the when the B channel is one, then the D channel should be one also. Then you would add these bits. And if you want to mask and XOR and so on, you only have to, it's very simple to think about this I, according to me, because all you have to do is go through all, the, think through all the combinations and set the D bits to 1 where you want them to be 1 and 0 where you want them to be 0. This means you, instead of calculating formulas with uh, capital A's and B's that you can see as an example in uh, in um, the hardware reference manual and use AND OR and XOR uh, and parentheses and so forth to calculate your min term you can I think think about it a little more simply such as for the for this uh, copy blit for example it was easy to to calculate the min term it's already calculated how is it calculated well this these eight bits are the eight bits we are looking for and this one bit is bit seven in that control byte in those two control nibbles how do we uh, calculate this value well we take these bits in reverse order so that we get a binary number which is one 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 zero 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 who says guys can't multitask huh and uh, if we type that out we get hex f0 so that means we can take these notes and directly insert them in our copy control word so that means these two nibbles become F0 and that is indeed uh, 9F0 is indeed a valid copy blit combination. The 9 enables the proper channels and the F0 combines them in the proper way to make the destination a copy of, of the sources. If we run this now uh, we've suddenly changed, we're not quite done yet, uh, we need to also set the A modulo to the same value because we're using the A source and if we don't set the A modulo it could be could have been set to anything by the operating system or another process or another part of your demo but if we run this now it again will be very de very depressing instead of our cleared rectangle we have just copied the rectangle to itself basically 
Well, that's no good. <clears throat> and so how do we make this interesting? Well, let's introduce the mask registers. Uh, I prefer to set both in a long word. Uh, you can set them individually if you like. Uh, one important fact is that if your blit is only one word wide, only 16 pixels wide, then both words will be anded with each other before uh, masking any of the sources. That means that if one of the words is zero, then the resulting mask will be zero. If all the bits are one in one mask word and half the bits are one in the second mask word, then only half the bits will be set in the combined mask. They're simply anded together. Um, look up the, the uh, on Wikipedia, logical operators and binary and and so on if you need to re need a, a refresher on those. Um, now, if we set this to, well, we, we want to put uh, something, uh, since uh, the first word mask is address DFF 044, uh, and we move a long word to it, it will set both the, f both the first and last word mask. If we set this to zero, something should happen. I have not rehearsed this, so anything might might happen. Well, what we got was a some sort of mask on the first word of the rectangle, if you can see it. But it doesn't quite look like it clears the whole word, so what's going on here? Well, because I've made an error. I've actually poked the operating system right now. So I'm going to test if the operating system is still alive and update the source and reset the Amiga. OK, you didn't see that. As I'm cool, yeah. We're as I'm cool, dude. Um, so we're back. We've escaped another bug. What we did was write to address hex 44, very down low in memory, probably overwriting some important vector or other. And we could have just ruined everything. Uh, what happened there was that we didn't set um, the first and last word mask. We poked the wrong address. And therefore, um, it was set to whatever the operating system or some process used for a mask uh, for its last split. So, no wonder. Now we should get to blank edges on the left and right edge of our our a defined blitter window. So that's how the mask registers work. If you want to make some fancy mask, let's say uh, that you want to mask away all the... Let's think here now. Well, every let's say you want to mask away every other pixel. You can put this in, and you can see that it indeed clears vertical one pixel columns at the left and right edges of our rectangle there. So that's it. I'm, I want to tell you a little bit about the loading order of these registers. Um, and the working operation of the blitter. Uh, when you're using these shifts and masks, uh, naturally, if you want to uh, 
uh, set that to um, set all the bits, not mask anything, you do it like that. We didn't have to set uh, the mask register before we had a copy bullet because we had programmed it to set all the bits to a definite value for all uh, the, the combinations and uh, blitter operations. Now we do, and if we set the, all the bits to 1, we have a normal copy blit again. Now, what happens if we shift this? Well, let's try it. Uh, of course, there's, there's no use in setting the B source shift register. Nothing will happen, because the B source is disabled. Only the A and D source. A and D channels are enabled. So, however, if we shift this, we should see some difference at least, and we do. So that's basically how you shift things with the blitter on the Amiga. Uh, I will leave scrolling for the next tutorial, um, but I would like to go through the uh, order of operation of the blitter and the order of loading the blitter reg registers because it can cause cause you bugs sometimes and then it's good to know. When the blitter performs its operation it first masks then shifts and then combine the sources logically. Uh, and um, that means normally this means that as well as long as you normally this means that you want to set them first and um, this is uh, a bit of an uh, bit overkill but you may want to use the blitter uh, data registers these ones at one point and then you must decide whether you want to set them before shifting and masking or after because when you write oh I'm sorry these ones because when you load them you load them and um, if memory serves it will be latched immediately um, so that they will already be available at the start of the blit and that means that if you shift and mask them afterwards they will indeed be shifted. Um, that is if, if you set the mask and shift addresses. And now I, I've confused you a little bit because I talked about the operation of the blitter masking, shifting and logical combination of sources. That's the pipelined operation of the blitter once a blit is in progress. This is different, but normally um, you will want to um, set up uh, the blitter control registers and the mask first, and the pointers and modulos at any point, really, and finally, of course, the blitter size, because that's uh, what triggers uh, writing to this register triggers the blit. Um, it's also important to tell you that uh, none of these registers, except for, of course, blitter size, because it triggers a blit, need to be set. Basically, you could have a, a blitter loop that consists of a blitter weight and a, a write to blitter size. Uh, these registers will contain their values between blits, and so if you have, if you are doing many blits one after another, such as, for example, coding some cheesy Bob record or some crap like that, <laughs> then uh, you will only need to set these, uh, these ones up once. And um, the exception are the pointer registers. When a blit is finished, when this blit is finished here, then the blitter channel pointers will point to the word after the last word processed and that includes modulo 
That means that naturally, uh, when you split a memory uh, rectangle like this, you skip uh, to the next row. And uh, this is true also um, after after the blit has finished executing. During the blit, this pointer register will be increased or decreased ac uh, according to the to the mode of the blitter, this flag. Um, and it will add modulos for each row, and after the last row, it will uh, finish up by adding the modulos. Uh, so that you can basically chain uh, chain blitz, and this can be useful if you have a really big blit that you want to split up, or you want to split it up into small blitz because you need to do something with the CPU, or in the case of a line drawing mode that you want to draw a line and then continue drawing another line, for example in a polygon. Uh, so that if you draw a triangle, you just draw the first line and then just set uh, the end point of the next line, and so on. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can move all these up here before the weight blit. If you initialize uh, blitter registers, you must always proceed it with a blitter weight, like this. So this would be a valid way of doing it, if it weren't for the label conflict here. Uh, <coughs> and um, finally then, we will clean up a little bit more. by putting this in a little nice subroutine with a word of warning. <coughs> Excuse me. That was not the word of warning that, that comes now. Namely that um, uh, calling a subroutine, of course, incurs a, 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 a uh, performance penalty Uh, of something like, I think it's 28 plus 36 cycles, which can be hefty if you're doing a lot of blitz. We don't. We do only one blit, so. Uh, finally then, the blitter nasty bit. Oh yeah, let's get blitter nasty. What it does is uh, give the blitter absolute priority over the CPU. Uh, and that means that the CPU cannot perform any work while the blit is in progress. An exception to this is that you can squeeze, if you're lucky, you can squeeze in, a, uh, there's something called prefetch in the Motorola 68000 CPU, so that you can, uh, so that this instruction, well, it will actually not be executed before the blit started. When you trigger the blit, there's room for a small instruction, small in, in uh, as in uh, memory access and total instruction size. You can squeeze that in here and get it calculated before the trigger of the blitter takes. Uh, so that's a good thing to remember for performance. Uh, and um, to set the blitter nasty, uh, we set bit 10, just verifying so I don't lie to you. And let's check, let's check what that is. Bit 10 is where, oops, uh, is hex 400 which means that we can... What the hell did my bookmark take? No, apparently not. We can set it here, 
and this will then ensure that the blit is, is uh, executed in the shortest time possible. So I think that sums it up for now. We remove the shift, let's put it back in. And uh, another final note on shifts. You can see that there's a disturbance in the force within our rectangle there. Um, a final note on uh, setting up the blitter then is that in ascending mode, the normal mode of the blitter, um, all shifts are performed to the right. We can show this by moving in a few pixels more. As you can see, it's shifted to the right there. Whereas in descending mode, which I won't demonstrate in this tutorial, um, th um, the words are shifted to the left. We'll get back to this shifting in the next tutorial, which will feature the scrolling effect. We will then move this uh, one time only blit into the main loop and um, basically see what happens. See you then.